It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All that and more coming up next. Well, the temperatures are cooling off, but the sun is still shining, and that makes for perfect football weather in the city of Pittsburgh at Akershire Stadium. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Boswell has it ready to go, and we are underway from Pittsburgh. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It will come out to the 25. And we get our first look at this New York Jets offense, really retooled the last couple of seasons. And at the helm under center, second overall pick from 2021 out of BYU, Zach Wilson. And we all know the scouting report on him. He can attack the field at all levels with a very strong arm and make big time plays off schedule. We also see a player with confidence and swagger. We see a guy who knows how to lead a team, who knows how to compete and wants to be great every time he hits the field. They'll start on the ground. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And it's a terrific return here as he's going to have them set up with a first and goal right at about the six-yard line. As you and I both know, one reason teams sprint plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one there? No, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. Now we get our first look at the hometown kid, rookie Kenny Pickett from the University of Pittsburgh as he leads the Steeler offense out for their first possession. And so often when you've stolen a possession as they just did there, on the first play, the first play picking up the fumble, the natural inclination is to attack, go after them big. Sometimes what you just want to do is put the ball in the hands of one of your best players in one of their favorite plays and establish your dominance that way. Following the fumble recovery, Pickett firing quickly here, and that's complete. Touchdown! Kenny Pickett fighting Pat Fryermuth, and the Steelers use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Well, that's how you take advantage of an early turnover. A sudden change situation, meaning ball's turned over. How's both sides going to handle it? One side handled it way better. They went right out on the field and put the ball in the end zone. One play, that just added insult to injury. Yeah, that just tells you on the defensive side, they didn't come out ready to go, still reeling from the fact that the ball got turned over. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Running back Michael Carter returning to the field with the rest of this offense. He's got to clear his mind a little bit right now. One carry, and that carry was a lost fumble. Clear his mind, clear his hands, and, this, and just let this one go. Sometimes it happens. You drop the ball, get a full game ahead of him, hand it to him again, see if they can start to produce. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw here going to be caught by Wilson. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. 
A give up the middle to Carter. And he'll have a Jets first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. Among the many backs used by New York last season, none performed as well as Carter, their fourth-round rookie. He went over 630 yards and scored four touchdowns while working through multiple injuries. He's really positioned himself to be one of the faces of the Jets' offense moving forward. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They go play action now. Wilson. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, Hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? They were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Here's Wilson to throw. Dancing to his left. And he wisely will throw that one away. But well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary. All of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. On third down, Wilson. And he finds Corey Davis. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first and ten, it's Wilson. He finds his man complete. It's Wilson. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and ten. The general manager of the New York Jets continues to make investments in the receiver room in this draft. Tenth overall pick. They invested again, this time with Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. Great speed, outstanding body control. Really goes up and snatches the ball out of the air. Everything that you're looking for in a WR1. He gets the first down right there. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter. As they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. From the shotgun, Wilson forced out to his left. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. But there's an incompletion, Gardner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. He has a man. It's complete to Wilson. Touchdown, Jets. The two Wilson, Zach and Garrett, team it up there. And the Jets are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Other drives that result in points for the defense. But when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And Garrett Wilson capped things off with a touchdown grab. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. 
So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and that's oh, now Harris lost it. It's a fumble, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And they are going to set up shot at the 40-yard line. Well, he's going to have to shake out the cobwebs first time he touches the football, and he drops it on the ground. So many times we talk about quarterbacks and taking care of them early to get them in the flow with safe throws, right? But with a runner, there is no such thing as a safe run, right? <laughs> right out of the gate, you're going to be admit, you're going to be in some traffic. Got to take care of the ball, and he didn't do that. On first and ten, it's Carter. Down to about the 37. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he's trying to dart through. No place for him to go. And he loses the football the second time. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Second time in his first half now, Charles, and he's coughed up the football. At both times, I think they were in spots where he's got to think about covering up the ball. He's got to refer to his fundamentals in those practice drills where they carry it through traffic. He's not out in the open field where he can swing it a little bit, cover it up, and take care of it. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Pick it a look to throw it here. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 36. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the draw, it's Harris. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good game and now on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Able to find his man, it's Pickens. And that's gonna be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 16. It's an 11 yard pickup. Thought they'd run it on third and one, not the case. 
Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And it's caught. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from that first half for the Jets. And they didn't get a whole lot done in the rushing department in those first two quarters. They probably feel pretty lucky to be tied here at halftime. And meanwhile, for the Steelers, they too didn't do a whole lot in terms of rushing efficiency in that first half, as you can tell by the numbers there. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Gunnar Olszewski bringing it out. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the peewee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. Harris going to get it again on second down. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. 42 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. So right after the defense gets you the ball on a takeaway and a fumble recovery of their own, You've got to reward them, don't you? You've got to stay out on the field, give them a chance to rest, and how about doing it the way they did it, running the football and picking it up on third down. Yeah, would not have wanted to go three and out. They avoid that right there. Yeah, they avoided the glares as they went back to the bench, didn't they? They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That play unable to get started thanks to the defense of Quan Alexander. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Back to throw, pick it. That's caught by the 6'8 tight end, Zach Gentry. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Throw complete, pick it to Johnson. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That one goes for 24 yards. In what many term is a down year for rookie quarterbacks. The Steelers took pick at 20th overall because they knew him better than any other quarterback in the draft. They considered him the most pro-ready passer in the class. He's got plenty of gunslinger in him as well. You give him an inch of space to make a throw, 
He's going to try and make it into a mile. On the give, this is Harris. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 10 more there and another first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Pickett. He's got Claypool for a Steeler touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Steelers have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Obviously a huge touchdown for their team, but a big touchdown for a rookie quarterback here to be able to break the tie in the fourth quarter. And he just shook off all the pressure, too. Because when you think about it, tie ball game, rookie quarterback, most of them are thinking, don't make a mistake. Instead, this young man just said, I'll make a play. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes the score 14-7. to Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Wilson leading the Jets up now for a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start this drive with a handoff to Carter. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Carter once more. And oh, my goodness, he loses it again. Jet, jet. Wow, that ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. They'll run the it's on the ground, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back drives, fumbles on the last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, pick it. And that one on the money to Claypool downfield. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. It's a gain of 22 as we tick towards 222 on the clock. These guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he'll get two or three out of that one as that is going to take us to the two-minute warning.
So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here we go. On now is the kicker, Chris Boswell. Boswell's kick is good, and they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. So here's Wilson and the Jets down by 10. A little under a minute 50 remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Throwing now is Wilson. Steps away to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. But they've certainly had trouble unlocking this defense through three and a half quarters. So I don't expect them to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything. And they force an incompletion there. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Now Wilson. He'll drop this in. And oh, he caught it up. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had it, having to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game set, man. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They run again with Harris. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and 10. They run with Harris. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Well, this is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the floor, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no point were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. 